our planet is the greatest living puzzle in the universe. A collection of worlds within worlds. Each one a network of relationships and connections between all their living parts, leading to the diverse and complex world we live in. And at the heart of many of these worlds is a very special group of animals. The insects and their close relatives, the arachnids and crustaceans, classed together as the arthropods. Together they account for 80% of all animal species on our planet. In these three specials, we're going to explore the connections and relationships that they have with us, our planet, and with each other. Ultimately to understand how this group hold the key to life itself inside nature's microworlds. Humans evolved around 200,000 years ago into a world that was dominated by the arthropods. In that time, we've learned to live alongside each other, taking the benefits and putting up with some of the annoyances. But do we understand what life would be like without this group of animals? How many of us really know how intricately linked our lives have become that without the arthropods, life as we know it would not exist? Some even question if survival of the human race would be possible at all. But how can this be? What have the arthropods ever done for us? The ways they affect human life are diverse and far-reaching. And to really understand the importance of this influence, we need to unpick the relationships, both good and bad, that we have with the arthropods. One of the most intriguing ways they influence us occurs in the forests of Kenya. These driver ants are searching for food. They're efficient hunters, moving through the forest like a tidal wave. They'll eat any living animal in their path. Colonies can number up to 22 million, and it's said that even elephants will turn and flee when they see them coming. These lethal predators are actually totally blind. They rely on touch, smell, and chemical signals to find their way. The soldiers flank the raiding columns of workers with immense jaws raised. Anything that can't outrun them risks becoming their prey. This is perhaps how most of us view arthropods, creepy crawlies that are nothing more than a problem. But their presence is actually a real asset for these villagers. The ants can capture up to 100,000 insects in a single raid, providing invaluable pest control for the farmers. Pests inside homes and in surrounding fields are removed, dismembered and devoured. In fact, the whole place is given a five-star ant cleanup. Thanks to their highly effective cleaning raids, these ants play a key role in the lives of the locals. But arthropods can provide us with something even more important than a service. They can provide us with one of the essential elements of life. 900 miles south of Kenya lies Lake Malawi. Beneath the water, something's stirring.
trillions and trillions of lake fly larvae are getting ready to emerge. After many months buried in the sediment on the lake floor, they'll take to the air to mate. Towers of mating flies stretch hundreds of meters into the air. Like smoke, they rise from the surface of the lake. The towers of flies are swept by the wind towards the shore and towards human habitation. Here they cloak vegetation and engulf whole forests and villages in their path. This may seem like an annoyance, but actually these flies present great opportunity. Villagers sweep baskets through the air to catch the flies. The biomass of these flies is equivalent to huge herds of game that roam the surrounding plains, but they're far easier to catch. The flies are then made into patties and fried in hot oil. Each patty contains half a million flies and has seven times more protein than the average beef burger. For people who have little protein in their diet, this can be a lifesaver. It may feel a long way from our idea of a perfect meal, but the importance of eating arthropods shouldn't be underestimated. Over 11 million tons of crustaceans are consumed by humans every year. In Botswana, the Mapani worm collection industry is worth millions of pounds each year. For 2.5 billion people worldwide, insects are a vital source of food. More than a thousand insect species form a regular part of the human diet. rich in vitamins, protein, and minerals. It's mainly in the West that people are uncomfortable with the idea of eating insects. But the United Nations believe that eating insects instead of mammal meat may provide a solution to stamping out famine and reducing climate change. The raising of livestock, such as cows, pigs and sheep, occupies two-thirds of the world's farmland and generates 20% of all greenhouse gases. With the human population projected to reach 9 billion in just 40 years' time, the consumption of arthropods could provide a healthy, earth-saving measure. So in the future, Arthropods have the potential to address our global food crisis. That's no small claim. But they've also played an enormous role in shaping our past, to such an extent that human life as we know it would not exist if it weren't for this next arthropod product. It all started with a cocoon and a beautiful piece of cloth. China, home to a billion people and a very special arthropod. This is a silkworm caterpillar. They eat only mulberry leaves. And after 50 days of feeding, they'll be 10,000 times heavier and ready to transform. 25% of their body mass is made up of silk glands. 
They spin a cocoon using a single thread, which can be over 900 meters in length. And it's this silk that forms the basis of an industry that shaped our history, and today has a commercial value of up to 300 million pounds. The cocoons are boiled, and precious silken threads begin to unwind. But this arthropod product is not only responsible for human clothing, it shaped our culture for over a thousand years. The transport of silk from Asia towards Europe led to the establishment of the famed Silk Road around 200 BC. This 4,000 mile trade route forged relationships between different and diverse cultures and was pivotal in the development of the civilizations in China, India, Europe and Arabia. So, silk has shaped human culture and distribution. But there's another arthropod product that's valued so highly, humans will risk their life trying to collect it. The Himalayas in Nepal. These men are climbing 400 meters up sheer cliffs to steal from giant honeybees. They're the largest honeybee in the world and their stings are notoriously painful. So what could make men risk their lives in this way? Honey. These bees, like honeybees the world over, take nectar from the surrounding flowers and spit it into the cells in the comb. Enzymes in their saliva break down the sugars and water evaporates until the condensed honey remains. This honey will be the colony's sole source of food during the colder winter months, and they'll give up their lives to protect it. So the honey gatherers will not only have to deal with perilous heights, but also with angry bees. When the men finally reach the comb, they must manoeuvre sticks to work free a section of honey. With little protection against the stings, they must work quickly before being overcome by the bee's venom. The honeycomb is dropped into a suspended basket and then lowered to the ground. They leave a large section of the comb intact so the colony can rebuild its honey supplies. Job complete, the men could descend to enjoy their hard-won prize. Honey's made up of 80% natural sugars and so provides a vital energy-rich food source for these mountain dwellers. So prized is this product that the farming of arthropods for their honey has now gone global. Around 1.2 million tons of honey is produced worldwide each year. When you think that one little bee in its entire lifetime produces only about a spoonful of honey, that's a humbling amount of work from our arthropod friends. But honey isn't the only product that bees provide us with. Bees and their relatives have a much more far-reaching and significant effect on us humans. Without which, it's questionable if humans would survive at all. And to see what this is, we must examine a wonderful process happening all around us and responsible for shaping the world we live in. The coastal cliffs of Sardinia in the Mediterranean are home to an unusual plant. The dead horse arum. It looks like a dead, rotting animal and has a smell to match. 
This canny flower even raises its temperature by as much as 20 degrees above the surrounding vegetation to complete its disguise. The smell is taken by the wind and it's not long before the arum is noticed. These flies are hoping they found a carcass on which to lay their eggs, but instead they become trapped. Inside the flower, they brush against the female's stigma, releasing any pollen they're already carrying. This flower is now pollinated. Spines prevent the fly's escape, and they're trapped. Overnight, when the flies are inactive, the spines wither, and the male pollen above them ripens, ensuring that in the morning, each exiting fly is coated with pollen to take to the next flower. This flower has invested everything in the process of cross-pollination. It's modified its appearance, its smell, its temperature, and its internal barriers, all to ensure the transfer of pollen grains from one plant to another. And it's this process of pollination that's the next key to why the arthropods are pivotal to human success and to our very own food chain. As much as 35% of all human food is dependent on pollination by arthropods. Across the world, the value of crops pollinated by insects is over 120 billion pounds a year. Without them, we wouldn't have apples, almonds, cherries, oranges, tomatoes or squash on our supermarket shelves. 84% of crop species grown in Europe still depend on insect pollination. Without insects, our crops would flounder, supermarket stocks would plummet, and life on Earth would irreversibly suffer. But to really understand our relationship with the arthropods, we need to examine their negative effects as well as the positive. The deserts of West Africa. Moisture in the soil and increased temperatures provide the triggers for a mass hatching. Eggs that may have lain dormant for 20 years hatch and flightless locusts called hoppers emerge. These hoppers follow the smell of freshly sprouting grass. After about 20 days of feasting, they transform into winged adults and form a swarm. A swarm can cover an area of a thousand square miles and can literally blot out the sun. They eat their own body weight in food each day. En masse, they can get through 200,000 tons of crops, enough to feed half a billion people. Many arthropods have the potential to reach biblical proportions. Their ability to reproduce quickly and prolifically means their numbers, left unregulated, can snowball out of control. For us humans, that can present a real problem. And there's a parasite that's utilized this breeding success. And today, it's the biggest cause of human fatality on our planet. It kills 3,000 people every day. And without arthropods, it wouldn't exist. Throughout history, this relentless killer has claimed more victims than any other disease. 
It's killed more people than both the world wars put together, and at least 40% of the world's population are at risk. The disease is carried by the Anopheles mosquito, and it's called malaria. But really, this mosquito is just a pawn in a parasite's game. The parasite lives by eating the red blood cells of the victim it attacks. When a mosquito bites an infected person, it sucks up the blood, containing the parasite into its gut. The parasite multiplies, then burrows into the mosquito's saliva gland, where it's squirted into the blood of the mosquito's next victim. And so the cycle continues. But can we really blame the mosquito? It gains nothing from carrying the parasite. And ironically, mosquitoes, along with other arthropods, might be the ultimate solution to this deadly disease in their ability to regulate each other. An example of this is played out in a field in the South Downs. These aphids are doing what aphids do best, multiplying. They're breeding machines, and by the end of a season, a single aphid can have produced over a billion descendants. Each aphid uses their specialized mouthparts to suck out the plant's juices. Left uncontrolled, they can devastate a whole field of crops. Luckily for farmers and gardeners, there's a crack team of predators on standby. Firstly, the colorful but ferocious ladybird. One ladybird can eat over 5,000 aphids in a lifetime. But working alone, they'd have their work cut out to keep up with the prolific breeding of the aphids. Luckily, they've got backup. Money spiders parachute in from surrounding fences and hedgerows. The spiders spin delicate but lethal orb webs and wait for their prey to arrive. When the bumbling ladybird has had her fill, her movements dislodge further aphids that drop into the silken traps below. This natural balance of predators and prey may seem only relevant to gardeners and farmers, but the global importance of this natural biological control is not to be underestimated. Pest control services provided by insects were valued at over $60 billion a year in the USA alone. This is a service we really can't afford to lose. And the arthropod regulators could potentially provide some hope against the worst disease the human race has ever faced. There are plans for a non-malaria carrying mosquito to be released to outcompete the deadly malaria carrying ones. So we've seen how arthropods provide us with food and products, how they've shaped our distribution and culture. We've seen how pivotal they are to our own food chain and how their presence can regulate pests and even fatal diseases. But there's one final key to how they influence our lives. One final offering from the arthropods that could shape the way we exist and operate in years to come.
In this vast colony, every army ant appears to be following a master plan. Like tiny cogs in a huge machine. They allocate resources depending on environmental conditions. If a rich food source is found, workers will appear to deal with the bounty. They build organized highways with no congestion. They construct shelter and a place to rear their young using their own bodies. They stage foraging raids and vacate an area of forest when food sources dwindle. They're efficient, responsive and smart. Everything our human organizations strive to be. But this colony doesn't function like any organization we humans are familiar with. There's no central control, no figure of authority. The Queen Ant may have her lofty title, but plays no role in coordination. And we're just starting to learn how such efficiency is achieved. Haulage companies and airports are learning to operate like ants. Abandoning predetermined master plans and instead focusing on smaller, smarter decisions. And it's not just the ants that we're learning from. Bees are teaching us how to build honeycomb style structures, providing maximum strength while using minimal materials. Spiders are helping us design crawling robots for inspecting ship holes and nuclear reactors. Butterflies hold the key in their wings to harnessing the sun's energy more efficiently than ever before. And termites, with their unpowered air conditioning towers, are inspiring architects. It seems that arthropods really do have a lot to teach us. Arthropods have been pivotal in shaping our culture and distribution. Without them, our food chains would collapse and pests would multiply beyond control. humans would do well to remember that arthropods could survive perfectly well without us. But life as we know it could not continue without them. <laughs>